Hi everyone, my name is Felipe and today we'll be reviewing some of the main settings that I found that are working pretty good cool for the prepared version 5. I know there are a couple videos out there but I wanted to make my input and show you guys what I found. So right now let's start with display. Right here we have all these settings but I found that turning FAXAA off allows you to reach a little bit more frames than if you have it on. Uh, right now we're running 8 MSA multi-sampling on, on our antalyzing but I found if you increase your resolution you must go down in your antalyzing. This is because you are giving them more resolution, this is more detail and you shouldn't be running that much antalyzing as you have more resolution mentioned before. Texture filtering, if you have a good computer, this shouldn't be matter uh, matter if you use trilinear, trilinear I'm sorry, or anti anisotropic 16. Dynamic textures, I, I like to have it on. Uh, blackout desktop, if you run on full screen and you have a second screen, this will black out your screen. So untake it if you want to have it on full screen and have uh, I don't know, Navigraph, uh, iBow or anything else on second screen. Right now we're going to go here uh, to B-Sync. Uh, I have it on, Try triple buffering, you must put it on and darker frames. These should be unlimited. This is because you want to get the most out of your computer. So by um, limiting your uh, your frame rate to 30, 40, 50, uh, you will be not having that much of frames or that much of performance from your computer. Okay. And last but not least, I have Mitmap PC panel. So if you have a small or low to medium computer and you're running out of um, those pressure frames, I should uh, recommend you guys to untake this mid-map PC panels as this, uh, what it does is to create another like memory or more resolution for those maps like your primary flight display or your multifunctional display. Now we are here on Word. This is uh, something pretty important. Uh, I like to make emphasis on that as this will affect that strictly your uh, frames. So let's start with terrain. I like to have an ultra level detail radius. Anticillation, I like to have the most out of the terrain. I, by the way, I have default terrain. I don't have any other third party um, terrain as I found that it is amazing. I mean, the detail from this default mesh is amazing. So mesh resolution, these two I like to keep it as uh, Orbex, I recommend on their forum, so 5 meters and 7 centimeters. Well, I don't like to have that much resolution, so just keep it on 60 or a little bit down, you can keep it on 15 if you don't mind. Okay, Water resolution, I don't like, or water details, I don't like to have that much, so I just keep it down low. And reflection, clouds, and user vehicle. Uh, those are the two things that I like to be reflected on water. Special effects, uh, keep those on medium. Now, uh, about scenery objects. Um, well, most of the people I've seen, they like to keep this uh, up to extremely, but I, I found that very dense is actually pretty good and decent. Um, this is an amount for my simulator. The auto gen just keep it very high. As if you want to be more immersive, um, a very high uh, draw distance is pretty good. But if you found that is dra draining or using a lot of frames or a lot of performance from your computer, just drop that down on one dot or two. That will give you a good, a, a good and decent amount of uh, draw distance. Auto gen and building density. Well, those two just keep it on normal. I found that this giving you a good amount of objects around the airport or around the area you are flying. So if you if you like and you have the uh, machine to run more 
performance so just go all the way to the top if you like but I found that normal is amazing now about weather I use active sky and clock draw distance should be down to 60 as you will be later on um, setting that up on your active sky cloud density distance or cloud coverage this density it must be at maximum okay but last but not least lightning in shadows uh, lightning if most of the people don't like to have HDR enabled but right here are my settings brightness uh, set to 1, loom set to 0 0.5 and saturation 1 okay dynamic lights and li uh, landing lights illuminating the ground it should be thick I don't like display lens flare as well I, I don't look that much to the sun okay about shadows I keep that low shadow draw distance up to ultra and what's casting and receiving I have for casting internal and external vehicle, terrain and clouds. For receiving, I have internal and external vehicle, vegetation and buildings. This is because I want those clouds to be covering everything on the ground. Okay, so these are the main settings that I found that are pretty good and working for the prepared version 5, and which will give you a decent amount of, of frames on the simulator. Okay guys, uh, as I mentioned before, here are these two lines will be improving your performance and actually optimizing the memory from your GPU so your simulator don't crash. I read a lot, I was looking onto some uh, forums which say that after adding this, all those crashes are minimized almost to zero. Remember this is just a recommendation it's up to you to input it on your simulator and try also you should add these lines into the, your preport 3d cfg at your app data okay and the last entry that we're gonna do in our system to fix or to minimize those crashes uh, is to input a small um, line or a small file into your registry so let's go ahead and start looking for your editor now we're gonna go ahead and look for hockey local machine and after that we're gonna go down to system current control set control and go down until you find graphic drivers okay once you find graphic adder, um, drivers you're gonna um, add a new entry so you're gonna come here to new and you're gonna add the one that says QWORD 64 bits once you create that you're gonna name it TDR level make sure that entry has to be on zero okay I really don't know exactly what this means but I'm telling it works and it was recommended for uh, from one special guest from the Arpex forum and to conclude this amazing video I like to show you some scenes recorded on the 7A7 from Quality Winds departing from Brazil if you look in the upper left hand corner you will see the frames that I'm getting at the moment with these uh, specific settings Remember that you always can adjust all of them and, and see what's best for your computer and to get out the most out of your computer. I will leave, I will leave as well the, in the notes below uh, the settings that I just showed you before so you can adjust and put them into your computer to see what's best for you. Okay guys, so I hope this works for you and I hope you have a great day. Bye bye.